Welcome back to the channel. On today's menu, we got snow bike stuff. Look at that thing back there. <whistles> Gonna be installing that uh, 2019 Camso DTS 129 on the 2014 Honda CRF 450R sitting right behind me here. We've got uh, quite a few steps we need to take, a lot of stuff to remove. Let's check out that snow bike kit real quick. Bam. If you haven't seen the uh, the graphics install, go take a look at that one. And right there, if you uh, haven't checked out the uh, Wild Moto store, link is down in the description. You might find something you like there. Heck, we even got another little uh, decal right there. So here's what we're working with. Got some spacers, got some hardware for the front end, chain, front ski, obviously the snow bike kits, and attached to that, um, we've got, I believe that goes in place of the rear shock. And then we've got our brake system here. There's no snow on the ground yet, but it's pretty damn cold. I'm not gonna be riding anytime soon. So we're gonna dive into this thing and I'm gonna see how long it takes me to disassemble and reassemble all this junk. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. If for some weird reason you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. There's plenty of moto content, dirt and snow, builds, all sorts of stuff. Let's get to it. All right, step one on the front end here. You got to remove the wheel and fork guards, disc protector, and the brake. Take the brake off the, uh, the mount on the fork and then unmount it from the handlebars as well. And keep the front axle around because we will actually be reusing that. There you go, front brakes off. All right, the front end's taken care of. Now at the back, rear wheel, swing arm, rear shock. Um, I've got to take out my kickstand here, chain, and take off the front sprocket guard as well. that and I don't think I don't think that should run into anything but I guess if it does we'll have to get the old mount out that bolt that bolt and that bolt get rid of our rear brake and then you should be able to get this spring off down here go ahead and remove the uh, mud flap I've got my plate mounted up in here Got the rear shock there. The uh, the body part is gonna hit on um, the exhaust mid pipe there. To make life easier, I'm just gonna remove all the plastics. All right, so for this exhaust, you got your dual pipes. I was debating on whether I, or not I should just take the air box out of here because as of just now, I decided I think I'm just gonna go to a uh, a pod filter. Since we're back here, rear brake, pop all those off the swing arm, and you should be good to go. Take all that off. Might as well start popping stuff loose. That right there is the upper shock mount. And then we might as well pop off the, uh, the swing arm. Should be a... Uh, a washer in there, just don't forget about it. Pop out this upper shock bolt. All right, so this is where life just can't be easy. This can only pull it out so far because that mount right there 
is uh, the Trail Tech mount for the kickstand. So I quickly answered my question, will that get in the way? Yes, 110% will. All right, foot pegs back up. All right, everything that we need to take off the bike has been, and now we can go to getting the uh, the front ski here all put together. So your hardware, you've got two side plates. You're gonna go just like that. Um, you may have a dowel already installed. And then you have these two guys right here, threaded at both ends, which you have to do one side plate on, they insert through the other side. Just get them to set in there. And then, same with that side. And then, go ahead and put your other side plate on. Next, we have what they call T-bushings. Uh, one of them is going to be slightly larger than the other. And I think the hole on the right side is the larger and hole on the left there. Okay, so those uh, those T bushings, you may have to pound them in there um, a bit. All right, now we can go ahead and install this. Um, one thing to note is that if you don't have these T bushings hammered in there far enough, then uh, basically the uh, axle, it's gonna catch uh, before it can actually get the threads out the other side. If you, uh, if you do it, you will uh, you will notice fairly soon. So now you got your fork clamp here. Obviously you can tell one of them's a little bit wider than the other. And then you'll notice that one of them has um, the holes for the bolts machined out just a bit. And that's just to countersink the bolts. So that one's gonna go on the outside, the smaller one, the larger one. Put just like that and then obviously the bolts are going to screw into those um, insets that are in there. So you can go ahead and start uh, tightening all these uh, bolts here. The, uh, the torque spec for this is 25 newton meters or 18 foot pounds. And then from here, obviously, tighten your axle nut to spec and then the uh, the fork pinch bolts as well. All right, so we're moving on to the rear here. And this, this guy right here is the uh, strut rod. You have two configurations with this. This is the configuration that it needs to be in. The spacer and then three rubber dampeners bolt at the end. The other configuration is basically that, just flipped. Um, this bike requires it this way. All right, so before we go ahead and install the whole rear end, like I said, you got your spacer, two bushings, and that's gonna go in. On the underside, you've got one bushing and obviously the bolt. And then lastly, we've got our other T bushings here. This guy, this guy, and that guy. So it should be laid out just like this. This one, it's gonna go right here. That guy, it's gonna go right there. And then this last little one goes on the outside. And one last T bushing that we have is this little guy right here. And basically it's either gonna go on this side or on this side of the, uh, the upper shock bolt. You want that on one side so that this is as straight as possible. snow bike got it up on its wheels now it's quite a bit of finagling to get that to go one of the next steps we're gonna route the chain so we've got to pop 
that cover off. Now we have access to everything here. So next we gotta loosen those three bolts there. This is for the chain tensioner. And just so you know, these are 5 8 Then you wanna loosen the, uh, the adjustment screw here. So we've got our chain here. They say this is the right length. Do not shorten it. All right, so this chain, feed it through. It's gotta go through there, over the front sprocket, obviously through that channel there. And then you can go ahead, get your master link out. So O-rings on that side. Go ahead and push it through. Then on this side, two O-rings. That link. There you go. So with the chain here, um, what you want to do, you can, you can shift this back and give it just a little bit of tension. Later, when you actually ride the thing for the first time, you do actually have to uh, do a few adjustments to the, to the tensioner and dial everything in. So for now, you can tighten it up just a bit, but leave a little bit of slack in there. And lastly, we've got our brake. We need to feed that up, most likely under the gas tank, and then we'll pop up front there. Um, you can either do it one of two ways. You can just disassemble everything and feed the whole lever, that whole thing up through, up to the handlebar. Or you can disassemble the master cylinder and it's easier to feed up through there and then just reassemble once it's on the bar. That way um, you most likely will have to bleed the brakes again. So whatever way is easier for you, pop the gas tank and we should be able to fly right up through there. All right, I went ahead and strung that through there. Um, so for now, this is just super temporary because I gotta add on a few more parts to this thing. So all this I'm just gonna leave disassembled so I don't have to take it apart again. So there it is, 2019 Camso DTS 129. That thing looks good on there. Still got a couple more things to do with this thing. And if you want, subscribe, check out the other videos. I'll have installs on the Air Pro, suspension, thermal bob, and then I got a couple other trinkets here and there. But that is it for the install. Now there's tons of adjustments that you can make and I'll probably make a separate video for that. This is probably long enough. And the deal is with most of those adjustments, you kinda gotta wait to ride it, then adjust accordingly. So not really much we can do. I'm not gonna go and uh, dirty it up, tear up my lawn. If you wanna check out any other installs on this 450, um, all the aftermarket stuff, there's plenty of videos on my channel. Uh, if you're into this, subscribe. The plans for this winter, tons and tons and tons of snow biking, and then tons of builds. We've got quite a few bikes stacked up, so we kinda have to get on it and fix a few of them. I really hope you enjoyed the install, found it helpful. Down in the comments below, let me know if you got a snow bike yourself and where you're ripping around. And then one last shout out for Wild Moto. Like I said, decals such as that one and ones that are about that size. Link down in the description, check them out. You might like something there. And last thing before I forget, this install took, I wanna say almost three hours. Um, and that's just with one person trying to manhandle this thing and dinking with a few extra aftermarket stuff that had to take off. That was the first time I installed a snow bike, so I think that's a pretty good time. But yeah, that's all I got for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.